let's see, you got to do a photo shoot not too long ago for the uh, yearly yearly for the yearbook, the Bible, if you will, Hail Varsity's yeah, Bible, the, pre, the the football preview, football yeah. preview, yeah. And you sent me this little video, and I'm just going to throw that out there for folks to watch. Sorry to all the podcast listeners right now; you're just going to hear the music, but it's good music, so. <laughs> I had fun doing that. <laughs> like you, and I know you had fun with that photo shoot. I mean, a dude that really hasn't played a whole lot of football shows up with a goat shirt on. Yeah. Gig, it's, it's, and it's a ballsy move. <laughs> and when I saw the shirt, I was like, all right, well, we're going to go with that. That pretty much. I stopped Kane. Because we, we kind of went into the shoot with a, normally we have like some kind of a conceptual idea that mm-hmm. just to kind of steer the boat. Uh, we went into this one not knowing how much time we were going to have with them and all of that kind of loosey goosey. And it was kind of, all right, Eric, go see what you can do. Mm. And so I went in completely open-minded to just, I don't know, explore the light in the, in the underneath the stadium there mostly and, and just see what we could see what we could do. And he walks in with that shirt and I went, all right, let's do it. Let's go. And, and uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Gabe's a good guy. Yeah. Very, a little more soft spoken, but, you know, I just wanted to see if I could catch some of that intensity in his eyes because I think he's he's had a not so not so smooth road. And I think he's, I, I feel like he's ready hmm. for this season to be something different. So we'll see. I have a technical question on one of the pictures, and that was the one where he's standing by the gate, I think it is, where mm-hmm. you've got all that backlight behind him and it shows one of the guys fell in there. My, long my hair. 16-year-old son, yeah. Yeah, okay, it was your son? Okay, I, th- I was wondering. That was a reflector, was that what he was yeah. holding to grab some of that light? Coming grab some of that light, light and shoot it back onto his face. Shoot it back onto him so you could get him as well as... Yep. It's a blown out background with the bright light. I thought that was kind of a cool effect. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. So <clears throat> now that you've had a little bit of time and you've seen kind of the way this new staff has operated a little since, you know, the previous staff has left, what are your impressions just kind of general of coach rule, his staff and where perhaps they could be leading this team? This well, I, you know, I'll just say I'm I'm no no different than anybody else on the radio on podcasts writing stories. You know, we're all just taking our impressions and giving our best guess, but I feel like um the way I've described it before is I feel like over the last 15 20 years um ever since they let Frank go, we've had a series of coaches who Checked some of the boxes, but not all of the boxes. Hmm. And we've we, we've as as a fan base, I feel like we've assembled this list of man. I'd like a coach to do this, 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 and this, right? Mm-hmm. And some coaches clicked off a few things, but not everything, and came up short in some areas and excelled in others. 
And it was never that, never anybody that like checked all the boxes. And I know me personally, I went into this coaching hire and I was just tired of being, I'm tired of being burned. Right. I'm tired of jumping on the bandwagon and, and then being let down. I was like, nope, 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 nope. I was adamant. You, you're going to tell me, don't show me or show me, don't tell me. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, you're going to have to prove it to me now. But he came in and he just kept checking things off that list that in my head, right? He's mm-hmm. doing this, his organization, he's an adult in the room, he's right, he's recruiting, he's distant and he's out in front, and he's by all accounts, he's the same person that we see as the public or media as he is behind the closed doors. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps checking all boxes. And then one day I just realized that, God damn it, I'm on the bandwagon again. Nah. Uh, I, but yeah, it feels, it feels different. Mm-hmm. Like the, the past several years when the la- when, when Scott got hired and we would go to, you know, the couple practices that they would allow us into, it almost felt like they were f- forcing the excitement a little bit, Mm. not just the coaching staff, but the players, like they were, they were kind of in fake it till you make it mode. Mm. And this is just one example, but when we went down, when we got access to practice in the spring, you know, I went, I gravitated over towards the offensive and defensive lines because I think that's where the season is going to be determined. Yes, sir. And I wanted Mm -hmm. to see, I wanted to see how they were approaching things. And there wasn't there team wide and then on a on a micro level with just the line, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of like I won't say unnecessary, uh, but there wasn't a lot of extra hyping each other up. They were just working. Mm-hmm. Just working. They were just doing the work. Coaches coaching, players playing, working on getting better. And mm. I like that. Mm. Um, especially in that position, right? You just work and you get better. And we'll let the play on the field decide whether we get to jump around and be excited. Mm. And we'll see. But it, mm-hmm. if it, it, it if he, I, I think, and maybe I'm being a little optimistic because I, you know, I'm, I'm born and bred Nebraska. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I want him to be good for lots of reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, as a fan, as a media member that covers them, I want him to be good. But I think, you know, everybody seems to be making six and six kind of the over under number, right? Six wins is kind of where everybody's set in the over under. Mm-hmm. Some at five, some at six. I think they could very easily be over six. Just by having, just by coaching. And we alluded, I alluded to that at, when we started this, this podcast tonight, when we started talking that, you know, just different, better, more involved, intentional coaching is going to account for a couple more wins. Mm. Yeah. Just that alone. Yep. Yeah. Right. And, and making, you know, the right, to de- <laughs> the right decisions, you know, don't mm-hmm. unside the kick when you're done, when you, when you're up little things like that. <laughs> right. I mean, but, and you know, we laugh at it, but Just you know, cause I've thing. seen, I've seen I mean, some things lately where, where people are like, seen a couple of things where people are are like saying they'll be lucky to win four games this year. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with that because that's only if you believe the team, the last couple of years, talent wise was only a three or four win team. I personally don't believe that the last two seasons that the talent on that team was only worthy of three or four wins. 
No. That yeah. those both of those teams were easily worthy of bowl eligibility. Easily, mm-hmm. talent wise. Right? You just look at recruiting classes. Mm-hmm. And they sh- they should have been at least that good. So and you know, there there there's been some change on the roster, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's taken any huge steps back that's gonna account for they'll be lucky to win four games. I just don't see it. I think I think they're gonna be better than six. Yeah, I don't see it either. I I, I think at least six is in my mind, you know, as you were talking, Eric, a, a thought crossed my mind. We used to see during the years that, you know, Frost and company were in town, they'd all wear those day-by-day shirts, you know, the coaching staff. You know, every time you turn around, they had a day-by-day shirt on up at the podium, but they never got better and better. <laughs> That's at, because they, I don't, they wore the shirt, but I don't, I don't know that they, they actually believed it. Now, right. or embodied what day by day actually means. Day it's by kind of day done. means you're doing the work. Yep. Not just the players doing the work, but the coach has got to do the work. Yeah. And that's a top down thing. Mm-hmm. Right. You mm-hmm. just got to put your head down, do to do today's work and get yep. 1% better. You get 1% mm-hmm. better every day, you're golden. Hmm. Yep. So it all starts here in less than what is it? Fifty days now? Yeah, I think we're right at about fifty. Right days, at fifty. Aren't we? So yeah. Sheesh. I'm ready. I'm ready I'm to. Ready. I'm ready to hear the band I'm ready. and the fans and and yeah. to hear the. E- even after thirty years, the still the first tunnel walk of the season just kind of mm-hmm. permeates my body. Yeah, and you and you can't help but get excited because I just mm-hmm. I just love college football. I do too. We're just we're going to game. those first two home games, and then also going to uh, Purdue for sure. Maybe more than that, we'll see. <sighs> uh, but yeah, my <sighs> goodness, this has been a this has been a lot of fun. Uh, this has been great hearing your stories, all the things that that you've seen as a photographer, literally not even through the lens, but just in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's been, been very eye opening for us and for me for sure, but we need to know one more thing, just a little something, something about you that maybe you've never said on the eye test, or maybe somebody at Hale varsity doesn't even know necessarily about you. Just a fun little quirky fact about yourself. This is our fun fact segment that sometimes isn't so much fun for people who aren't prepared for it. But I told you about it earlier today. I know you did. You so, did. Come on you now, did. Aaron. <laughs> Bring us a fun fact. Let's see. Oh, that's what I thought of. I got. I got. A, I got a couple things. Go for Behind it. Behind me yeah. here. If I don't lose my. It's got this bottle of dirt. Okay. From the last game at Rosa Blatt Stadium. Oh, very oh, cool! Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and my yeah. mom got me. My mom got me this little Rosenblatt Stadium thing that she found at a thrift shop somewhere. Wow! And I set that. I set that little bottle of dirt inside that, and I've moved it around with me every every time I've moved since. Because that's that's the the dirt from the last game played at Rosenblatt that I was there for. That is very cool. Yeah, very then. Very cool. I was going to say on a, on a personal level, as a Husker fan, somebody grown up in this town, played football in this state. Um, and since we were talking about Frank, my very first Frank Solich memory, personal memory of, of he was up at the high school I was playing at recruiting, you know, doing a stop through, watching film with coach, recruiting a couple guys. And I had just happened to walk into the locker room as they were walking out of coach's office and me and a, and a couple of the guys and uh, he stopped and he mentioned my name and looked me in the eye and said, son, if you were three inches taller and 15 pounds heavier, I'd offer you right now. Oh, wow. You played O-line or what? Fullback. 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 Oh, golly. You could have been one of those. Yep. Legendary fullbacks from back in the day. Yeah. If <laughs> mom and dad had given me three more inches, I could have found the 15 pounds. 
Oh yeah. I feel, yeah. <laughs> I, I, You'd give me another three and a half inches. I probably would have just naturally had another 15 pounds. I could have hand you, I could hand you the 15 pounds. Cause I found uh, them in the last, the, the 15 pounds would have been, easy. Yeah. I, I'm a coach. I'll find the 15 pounds. Yeah. But I can't do anything about those three and a half inches you want. <laughs> I'll wear, I'll wear some special guys cleats. <laughs> yeah there you go yeah some stilettos yeah, yeah anyways I, I wish i that's could a, that's always been that story that just like like gets mm-hmm. me to the heart i could have been could have could have could have if my genetic code had just give me oh. another three or four inches <sighs> do you have any new <laughs> fun facts scott uh i got i got new suspension put on my car finally I had the had the suspension parts come in like I don't know back in like February or March or something like that and just put it off forever and ever and ever and ever and got it on, dialed it in and everything. And so now my car sits a little bit lower and it's a way more comfortable ride. Good. Um, no more clunking in the back of the car, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um but that's that's basically it. Um yeah, car looks sweet now. I don't have this stupid gap between my wheels and the fender well. I nice. hate that so much. I want it to be like <laughs> right about there. That that's what I want. I want you good like fitment. I I like good fitment and I like when I turn that the bolstering in my seat doesn't have to work as hard to keep me in the seat. So hmm. that's uh that's a fun fact about me. My car is more of a race car now, so yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, let's see. For me, let's see. My golf game's worse. It's not really a fun fact, but it's more funny. But the YouTube rabbit hole is, I have decided, is my mortal enemy. No matter what it is, whatever topic I decide to research, there's 85 different channels that suddenly show up, and I like them all. So I'm watching videos. I'm like, oh, this will help my game. This will just this one little tip, and you'll be hitting the Yeah. 50 tips later. Yeah, I'm I'm right. now I haven't shot less than 20 something over par at the par 3 course lately. When I used cuz now you got too many things in your head. Too many things in my head. So that's my fun fact you is need, I'm you need try to get to back un- to stop thinking and just, <laughs> just swing, swing the, club. the club and call it good. <laughs> cuz I have no swing anyway. It's all arms. There's really no body turn. There's no it's just hope I hit it, you know, kind yeah. of thing. And, and just to uh, adjust your ex- expectations. Yeah. I'm, I'm not yes. good enough to get mad and swear. So, but I do anyway, I'm good at swearing. I've discovered that that's another fun fact, but uh, I think we all are, if we've ever mm-hmm. swung a club anyway, uh, Eric, where can folks find you on the social medias and how can they follow you? I'm on the, Oh my God, they all have different names. I tried to get them more unified names, but it didn't help at the time um i'm pretty easy to find on all of them you pretty easy to find on twitter what is that or on that one what is that one eric francis picks. eric francis picks on yeah, twitter yeah. Mm-hmm. eric's picks on instagram yeah and sports shooter 402 on instagram okay uh, yep. you mentioned the eye test mm-hmm any and, podcast uh, and you can any of the podcast apps you can find and that you're on one. youtube too right yep we just started doing we started cool. getting on youtube and i started a little bit of my own little side channel thing where i just cool. talk a little bit more about photography and life so sweet so when, cool. when i randomly have a thought i just sit down and record some <laughs> how about you scott Yes, folks, you can find me on Twitter and Twitter alone. I'm at Scott Jen Red Pod. That is Scott with two T's. The second T is and will always remain silent. Um, you can follow me there. Still not active there yet. Once the season gets a little bit closer, I might get a little bit weirder. Um, so, yep, give me a follow there and and hang tight for, for a wild ride. Absolutely. You can follow me and the show at Jen Red Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, or listen to the audio show on your favorite podcast app by subscribing to Generation Red. We post new shows within 24 hours after we live stream them. So this audio will be available. And uh, don't forget to look down in the description of this video once it is on demand, and you'll find the link to vote for the uh, 
Nebraska Podcast Awards. And that link will also be available to those of you who are listening to this show in audio. Anyway, for Eric Francis, he's Scott, I am Ken. Together we are Generation Red, here to remind you as often as we possibly can that there is absolutely no place like Nebraska. And Iowa's corn sucks P-trap juice. Yes, indeed. (laughs) All right. Until next time, go Big Red. Go Big Red. Go Big Red.